Powerful song. All right, if you could stand, turn your Bible to First Chronicles chapter 16. In verse 34 and verse 35. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34 and 35. And it's right there in the Old Testament. And this morning we're going to look at uh, living with the spirit of gratitude. Look what it says in verse 34. It says, All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this passage of Scripture. Thank you, Lord, we have a God that is holy, that is just, that is merciful. And Lord, help us to be thankful. Help us, Lord, this morning to learn to have a, a heart of gratitude. And Lord, there's many people that are very ungrateful around us and in our world. Maybe we are ungrateful. But help us, Lord, to, to uh, have a heart of gratitude for the things, for the, for the blessings that come from you, but also, Lord, for the things that people do for us. Lord, I pray if there's someone here again this morning that never received Jesus as Savior, may they leave this place today with uh, the Spirit of God in their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. First Chronicles chapter 15. Uh, I said 15. Actually, it's 16. I'm sorry. It's 16 verse 34 and 35. Uh, I apologize for that. I was reading out of 16, 34, and 35. I, did I say 15? I said 16. I'm sorry. And maybe it was me. I, I got to listen to what I say. <laughs> uh, uh, right before we get to our message, two things, uh, a couple things I want to share with you. Please pray for Cecilia. I talked to her yesterday. Uh, and if you could call her, uh, please call her. Uh, I ask her when she's coming home. She, uh, she says she doesn't know. And she's, uh, of course, uh, no visits. Uh, she feels very lonely. Can you imagine being in a place and no loved ones to come see you and nobody? It's, it's kind of hard. So uh, just pray for if you could call her just to give a, a word of encouragement. Uh, please do. Uh, thank you for those of you who continue to pray for my granddaughter. It was a blessing to see her sitting down and, and moving around and all those things. It blessed my heart. She, she grew quite a bit. Uh, but she went through a lot of surgeries and uh, well, four surgeries uh, for her age. But it was a, a really great blessing to, uh, to be with her yesterday. Um, just pray for that. Pray for our church. Pray for our country. And with that, let's uh, look at this uh, living with the spirit of gratitude. So the question is this morning, we just went through Thanksgiving. And we, of course, we learned uh, in Thanksgiving to give thanks to God. I hope that you... Actually, give thanks, to, give thanks to God for your food, for your family uh, there before you partake of that food. Uh, you know, well, I work hard, yeah, but God gives, makes sure that we're able to work, uh, keeping us healthy and all those things. But anyway, uh, my, question, my question to you this morning is this. Are you a grateful person? And I'm just going to keep a couple seconds here just to, so you can chew on it. Are you a grateful person? We live in a country that is full of ungrateful people. Yep. The more you give them, the more they want. Amen. And the more they expect. <laughs> uh, and that's a reality. You don't have to walk very far. I mean, there are people. We talked about last week, I believe it was uh, Tuesday night. We talked about when Jesus, uh, those ten lepers. And when Jesus uh, healed all ten of them, one came back. And one was grateful enough to say, thank you. But the other nine, they were gone. Can you imagine you having a disease that's going to kill you? You literally know your days are counted. And you don't even have a grateful heart to say thank you for the person that healed you. Listen, the story goes on the same way today in our world. Yeah. We live in a, in a world full of ungrateful people. They just are, give me, give me, give me. And when they have, they want more, more, more. And the words thank you never come out of their lips. They think that this, you, we're supposed to give it to them. Goodness, I tell you what, I am so grateful for what I have. Amen. 
I'm grateful for the life that I have. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my church family. I'm grateful for the food and the clothes that I wear. I'm grateful for those things. I'm grateful for each day that God gives me. Actually, that's the first thing I say every morning. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. Because we just don't know when we depart from this world. And we have no more days to count. So every day is a blessing from God. Because let me tell you, there was thousands of people that died through the night. And I'm not trying to scare you, but the question is, I'm just relating to this, is are you thankful? Are you a grateful person? Are you have a, do you have a grateful heart? Listen, Thanksgiving is not just at Thanksgiving Day. That's right. All right? Gratefulness is not just at Thanksgiving Day. Oh, I'm, grand, I'm grateful for the mashed potatoes. Or I'm grateful for, for, the, for the yams. Or I'm grateful for whatever it is you, you like. I'm, I'm so grateful. Oh, I ate so much. Oh, my goodness, I'm so grateful. What about the rest of the year? Amen. Day after day, the things that we do, the people we talk with, the places, that th the things that we accomplish uh, or make with our own hands, are we grateful for those ten fingers that God gave us? That we can have the ability to do so many things. I was saying yesterday, I was thinking about it. Uh, no, don't think I'm going there. But I was thinking about it. There when my daughter is, the, the, the maintenance guy is leaving. Oh, actually, it's the last week. So they're struggling to get another person to, to, to be the maintenance person there. It's up there in, in the middle of a camp, uh, in the middle of nowhere. And the interesting thing is, uh, the, the, the people that do maintenance, uh, uh, you don't see many of them. You know, because now there is a person that needs to do electricity, plumbing, uh, even put boilers together, uh, woodwork, cement work, all that. I said, I look at my daughter, I said, I could fit that job. <laughs> I said, I'm qualified for that job. And she goes, well, that's a good uh, retirement job. I was like, I guess it is. But anyway, uh, but uh, aren't you grateful for those things? You know, it's, it's a blessing when we, with these fingers that God gives us, we have the ability of doing things. In the end of the day, we say, Lord, thank you. For the ability that you give, for the wisdom that you give me to give those things. My other question is before we get to our points right here, living with the spirit of gratitude is this. Are you a grateful person? Are you grateful for the things that people do for you? Or your spouse does for you? I, this morning I was so grateful. My wife comes upstairs and says, breakfast is ready. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Breakfast is ready. Come downstairs. The tea is made. Oh, those, the, the, the plate is full of food. You have to be grateful. Amen. You have to say thank you. Otherwise, you are ungrateful, isn't it? Somebody, somebody took time, get out of bed early to go prepare this stuff. You have to say thank you. Believe me, there are a lot of people that never say thank you. So let's look at uh, this morning from several points about how to have a spirit of gratitude. Number one, be thankful for the goodness of God. Be thankful for the goodness of God. Look what it, this, the, it says right here in uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 34. It says, all give thanks unto the Lord. Look what it says. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. See, he says, all give, he's imploring, he's begging us to say, all give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to him. Bless his name and say, thank you, Lord. Listen, in everything the Bible says, Paul says, in Thessalonians says, in everything give thanks to God because it is the will of God. I'm just paraphrasing the, ver the verse. But we have to be thankful for the goodness of God. Listen, how God is a good God. He is good. The reason why we have the rain, we have the snow, we have the sun, we, we, we have the wind and all, is because God is good. I mentioned this the other Sunday. God, we have to remind ourselves that God is good. And He's so good to us. Mm -hmm. Isn't God good to you? Amen. Jesus actually declares th these words about the goodness of God. In Luke chapter 18, verse 19, He says, And Jesus said unto them, Why callest thou me good? None is, uh, none is good, save one that is God. You see, even Jesus says, God the Father, He is good. Amen. He is a good God. No one is good except God alone. The words of Jesus go against every self-righteous man out there who claim to be good. Listen, there are a lot of people that do good for, for, the, for society. There's a lot of people that do all kinds of good. But our goodness can never compare to the goodness of God. Right. Never compares. 
There are people that, you know, they, 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 their minds are so intelligent. They build bridges and, and they build huge buildings and they build all kinds of stuff. And you say, wow, and they do so much good to society. They, they, they help those who are in need. But let me tell you, we can never compare the goodness of mankind to the goodness of God. Amen. God is good. The Bible says in Romans 3.11 says, There is none that understand, there is no, no one that seek it after God. There is not, that, is, that they are good out of their way. They are altogether become unprofitable. There is none that do it good, no, not one. You see, we cannot compare the goodness of man to the goodness of God. He is a good God. Amen. It rains, and people say, oh, goodness, I don't like rain. Should I mean, like me, I like it like if it rains just at night. When I'm sleeping, it rains at night, Lord, just rain at night, in the day, bring the sunshine, we will be good. When it snows, snows at night, in the morning, just melt the whole thing, it will be wonderful. It will be good, it will be great. Right. But see, but God is different than we are. God wants to see the beauty of the snow, and we don't like the snow. Oh, i got to shovel that thing. And it rains, oh, I'm getting all wet. Well, there's ways we can get still, stay dry, right? But we complain and complain all the time, and God, in His goodness, provides all those things for us. Listen, sometimes it's just good to have, get wet. So when the, let me tell you, just look up and let the rain hit on your face and say, hey, God, good. Sometimes it's just good to just lay in the snow and make a snow uh, like an angel, like this. Just, it's just good to do that. They're like, what? Well, you don't, you're kidding me. I said, listen, God is good. Go down south and people are dying to come north just to go see the snow. All right? And when they come north, just give them the shovel. <laughs> and they will, they will run south again as fast as they can. But anyway, Psalm 100 verse 5, it says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 106 verse 1 says, Praise ye, praise ye the Lord, or give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endureth forever. So everything that God make is originally good. His creation is good. All the galaxies that you see is good. Even mankind, He made, him, he made mankind in His image. God is a good God. Oh, goodness. My heart goes to these people that put a front at God and put a fist at God and think yep. God is imperfect and God's not good. Yep. Oh, the Bible says that he sends the rain on the evil and on the good. Amen. You know why? Because he's a good God. People that put a fist at God and reject God want not to do with them if they only see the goodness of our God. Amen. God's goodness is showcase in the law he gives israel the law and the law is holy and god is a good loving merciful god the very fact that salvation is available is because of the goodness of god Amen. the very fact that he gives you heaven the very fact that he he, he he forgives you of your sin is because of the goodness of our god Listen, when the Lord, when Jesus left heaven to come to this world and to be and to live in this world and to go to Calvary's cross, is because of the goodness and mercy of God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, what we do, we ought to give thanks to our God. Amen. We have to be grateful for the goodness of the Lord. Listen, don't take for granted your children, those who are married. Don't take for granted your spouse. It might come a day you don't see him anymore. Right. But let me tell you, be thankful, be grateful for the good things that God put in your life, the people that God put in your life. Be good, be thankful for that. He is good to you because He loves you. He's good to you because He cares about you. He's good to you because you are important to Him. Oh, some people are very irrelevant to society. Society look at them and said, you guys are nobodies. But let me tell you, now with our God. Right. God looks at every one of his children and say, I love you. I care about you. I, I, I'm merciful to you. I'll be good to you. You know what? And God is. And God is. God is good to you because you are one of his children. Even in spite of all the evil that we have done in this world, God is good. He's a good God. So number one, how we should be thankful because be thankful for the goodness of God. Number two, be thankful for the holiness of God. 
Go to Psalm chapter 30 and verse 4. Be thankful for the holiness of God. Look what it says. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. Listen, folks, the holiness of God is the most difficult of all God's attributes to explain, partly because it is one of those essential attributes that we do not share. The only reason we are, are holy or set apart is because of the righteousness of Christ, which are imputed on us. But God is a holy God, and we should be thankful for His holiness. And let me tell you, and when we go to Him in prayer, we should think about how holy is our God. Listen, we should do like the people in the Old, Old Testament used to do. What they did, they were laid on flat on the ground because they understood the holiness of God. Amen. I tell you what, many Christians today they live in a state of apathy. I say this and I keep saying again, even in America, churches are in a state of apathy. They think, oh, uh, I, I pray if I feel like it. I don't feel like I should. We should strive. To go to the throne of grace and, and to go to Him and, and, and praise Him for who He is, a holy, righteous God. I think we sometimes we, we forgot or we forget that our God is a righteous, holy God. Let me tell you, there's many people in this world that are self-righteous. And when they look at you, you can never measure to them. You're always down below their noses, because they live up with their nose up in the air. Oh, look who I am. You know, there was a time in my life, there was, I was much younger, if people had certain status in life, I kind of felt like small compared to them. I did. I, I, I really I confess that to you. you know, like the person have a, a, a different career or a, a good house, whatever it was, I felt that way. And one day I woke up and say, what in the world am I thinking about here? They're just people made out of flesh and blood just like me. We respect the positions, but let me tell you, they're not better than where we are. In the eyes of the Lord, we are the same way. And to further cross, we are the same way. People in great need. And sometimes, you know, society makes you feel that way. Oh, you didn't go to college. Oh, well, you're here. I'm here. I went to this college. You went to this college. Oh, you know, I'm better than you. That's self-righteous. God is a holy, righteous God. God's holiness is what separates Him from all other beings. Holiness is what makes Him separate and distinct from everything else. God's holiness is more than just His perfection and sinless purity. It is the uh, ascent of His oneness and transcendent. He's a holy God. And let me tell you, when we approach Him, may we approach Him in a sense of understanding that is a, He is a holy God. God. When we pray to Him, may we come to Him and pray to Him for who He is, a holy God. Listen, when we talk to the Lord, don't talk to Him like you talk to your friends. He is God Almighty. Go to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. I want you to see something about Isaiah, a great prophet in the Old Testament, how he saw God and the holiness of the Lord. Look what it says in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Look what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and twain he covered his face, and twain he covered his, fe uh, his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, what is that? Holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. It is. And it says, And the post of the door moved, and the voice of Him that cried in the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Listen, now this is the prophet Isaiah. And look what he says. This is a man of God, a prophet of God. Look what he says. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am of un a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah the prophet, he, what he saw there, he saw the holiness of God. He saw who, God for who he was. And let me tell you, if we don't see God the way Isaiah saw it, we're going to miss the blessings of God and the way who our God is. He's a holy God. 
more than a friend. He's a God of all the earth. He's a God of all creation. And let me tell you, we ought to be grateful that we are called one of his children. Amen. That should be in our lips each and every day. He is a holy God. So number one, be thankful for the goodness of God. Number two, be thankful for the holiness of God. Number three, be thankful for the judgments of God. Go to Psalm chapter 119, verse 62. Be thankful for the judgments of God. Look what it says. And it says, At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. The word judgment of being judged by someone doesn't sound very good, especially if it's directed to us. Nobody wants to be judged. You like to be judged? No, I don't want to be judged, you know. Uh, nobody likes that. I don't believe that none of us here likes to be judged. If you did uh, something wrong or sin against the Lord, and, it, and He would give you a choice to either be judged by man or by God, what would be your choice? Sister, I like the way, what you said. But let me tell you, if you did something wrong... And God's going to tell you, will tell you, like, okay, I'm giving you two choices. You want me to, you want to be judged by mankind or judged by me? What would you say? Well, David, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 2, uh, you wanna, if you want to go there, uh, it had that issue. What did David do? I'm par paraphrasing the passage right here. He had the census. He had people go counting how many people were in Israel. Oh, and he was told not to do that. But guess what? He didn't listen. Like we do. We stubborn. We don't listen. And we forget God. And you know why? He did it. Well, look what it says. If you did um, in the Second Samuel chapter 24. Uh, and it says in verse 4. So now it's standing the king's word prevail against Joab and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out to, uh, from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. In verse 10, if you could jump to verse 10, it says, And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech you, thee, Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So after David, in a stubbornness, was told not to do what he was going to do. God was taking care of his people. God was, was building the children of Israel. And he wanted to be a, put himself in the place of God. He went and sent people out to number the people. When that was done, he came to himself and was like, Oh, that was foolish what I did. I disobeyed God. And he asked God for forgiveness. Look at verse 11. And when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David, uh, David, sir, saying, go and say to David, thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things, three things, choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, shall seven years of famine come unto thee in, the, in thy land, or wilt thou flee uh, three months before thy enemies while uh, they pursue thee, or that there be three days of pestilence in thy land? No advice. And see, and see that, that what answer I shall return to him and send me. Look what it says in verse 14. And David said unto Gad, I am gr I'm in a great strait. Let us now, let us now into the, into the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let us fall now into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hands of men. You see what, what David says right here? David loved the Lord. And David said, you know what? I did wrong. What I did was wrong. I disobeyed God. But I want to fall in his hands. Mm -hmm. Because I know that he's merciful. And that he's just. And he will deal with me justly. Let me tell you. It's better to be judged by the Lord Amen. than judged by men. Because men can be very unmerciful. Amen. Not our God. God is an unmerciful God. And David teaches us a lesson right here. That let us fall into the hands of the Lord when we do wrong. Actually, Lamentation 3.22 says, And if uh, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. God is a merciful God. And let me tell you, even in his judgments, God is merciful. And David understood that. So what we have right here. Uh, we have, number one, we see be thankful for the goodness of God. Be thankful for the holiness of God. Number two, number three, be thankful for the judgments of God. 
And number three, number four, be thankful for the saints of God. Go to Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse thirteen. Second Thessalonians two thirteen. Should we be thankful for the saints of God? Yes. Look what it says there. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and believe of the truth. So the, the Apostle Paul says right here, we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Amen. You see, listen, the church is full of imperfect people. Actually, the church is a hospital for sinners. We all have our downs. We all have our ups. But let me tell you, God says in his word right here, we ought to be thankful for one another. Amen. Listen, the church should be a church where unity is there. It's a church where we love each other. Let me tell you this. I have two sisters. All right? Do I agree with everything my sisters do? No. I don't think they agree with everything I do. But let me tell you one thing that I learned from my parents. I, I, I have learned to love my sisters. Amen. I think family love together. I tell you, even in spite of the indifference that we have, when, when something is an issue in the family, family gets together. It's like blood crying out, isn't it? Let me tell you, we in the house of God, we are the family of God. We have many differences. We might not agree with one another. But let me tell you, it's got to be a spirit of unity within the body. A body that is not united and don't function right. So it's got to be a spirit of unity, and we ought to be thankful for one another. Amen. The people of God are to be thankful people, for they realize how much they have been given. Salvation has been given to us. When we are grateful, our focus moves from selfish desires and off the pain of current circumstances, and we go to the Lord and we be thankful. We ought to be thankful for our brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, this morning, I miss Cecilia here. You know what? She is the oldest in our church. And let me tell you, not oldest just in age, the oldest when we started the church. But let me tell you, I'm, I miss her. I miss her, uh, uh, the way she talks. I miss her eating a donut. I, I miss all those things about her. You know what? We have to learn to love one another. Amen. And to be thankful. Look what the Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, that we are to bound, look at the word, to give thanks always to God for you. So we have to give thanks to God for one another. Lord, thank you for that sister. Thank you for that little kid. Thank you for that, for that, for that brother in Christ. We have to be thankful for one another. At least if we're not thankful, we have to learn to be thankful. Thankfulness uh, uh, then is not only, uh, 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 we, are, we are to learn, let me tell you, I'm sorry, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to be thankful for them and, and it becomes healthy in uh, the way we live and the way we look at people. And let me tell you, uh, uh, right here, uh, for an example, uh, the psalmist, uh, uh, go to Psalm chapter uh, uh, 100, verse 4. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. All right? We talked about this verse early. And his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So what God, so the psalmist saying to, to us right here is one thing. When we go to the house of God, where we go? We go in anticipating and with the spirit of thanksgiving. Always, not just on Thanksgiving time, always. When we go to the house of God, we go and anticipate what God's going to do in His house, and we will go in with the spirit of thanksgiving. What is that spirit of thanksgiving? Be thankful for our church family. Be thankful for the little kids. Be, can, be thankful for each other. Be thankful to them. Number two, the Apostle Paul in, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is what? The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we have to be thankful for one another. Be thankful for the saints of God. Letter A, thankful for diversity. Everyone here is different. You agree with me? Everybody in this church is different. We have a diverse type of people here. Or we have uh, different colors, we have different, uh, different cultures, or we have different uh, uh, ways to go in life. We're different. I'm different from my wife. Right, honey? Very different. Uh, believe me. Uh, we live in the same house, we're all different. She thinks different than I do. I think different than she does. We're different. But let me tell you, it's good to be different. Amen. It's good. 
So all of us are important in the house of God. All of us are important in the body of Christ. And, and, and diversity is good. Different thinking, different opinions, different ways of doing things. The diversity is defined as different unlikeness. Two uh, synonyms uh, for diverse is variation and in, in dissimility. So the, the diversity means that everyone in the body of Christ is not just like me. I'm glad that not everybody here is like me. Everybody's different. So the list of diversity is, uh, is, is, is endless. Such as personalities, cultures, age, genders, education, work experience, upbringings, social econ econ economic status, status. So diversity is positive thing to have in the local church. It enables us to learn. It enables us to grow. It enables us to appreciate. Let me tell you. In the church we say, oh, I don't want to go to that Sunday school class because I really don't like that teacher. I like that teacher. No. We have to learn to like all each other because... That person speaks about God's word, the friend that that person speaks about God's word. We have to take it all together and learn and grow. Listen, the diversity in the church is wonderful. I'm glad that this finger right here is different than this finger right here. They are different. Actually, one is longer than the other. But it, they, they have the same common purpose. There is unity in my body. We function right, right? So when we cannot accept diversity, we have division in the church. If we, do, if we a church, we don't accept diversity, it's going to be division of the in the church. And we don't want that. That's not what God wants. Number two, be thankful, thankful for your talents. So this diversity brings different talents. I do uh, appreciate much of the multiple talents that we have in the church. We're not a huge church, but let me tell you, the different talents right here. Some lead the music. Let me tell you, I lead the music, but let me tell you, you know how I lead the music. I do the best that I can. It's not my gift. All right? I feel better when somebody's leading for me, to be honest with you. Some, lead the, uh, some play the piano. Don't ask me to go over there. You don't want me to play those things. You know, but praise the Lord that somebody has the ability to play those things. That's the ability in the church. Some, uh, some of you feel, uh, feel in preaching and teaching when I'm not here. Wonderful. Not everybody has the gift of preaching or teaching. But let me tell you, it's wonderful when we work together in unity and do that for the, for the glory of the Lord. We're building each other up that way. Some of you assist with the, youth, with the youth ministry. Some of you help in the sound room. Some of you teach specially the small children. Listen, I tell you what, years ago, I was told to teach, go teach the, uh, was that kindergarten kids? Or was the first graders? I think it was the first graders. What a nightmare. <laughs> I tell you what, what a nightmare. I, could, I had a hard time. I told the pastor, I said, listen, I like to teach, but don't put me there. I was dying over there. And he goes, why? It's like, I just can't speak their language. It's just, <clears throat> I just simplify the Bible that way. Some people have that talent. I don't. But some people do. And we praise the Lord for them. Some of you help decorate. Some of you help clean the church. Some of you bring donuts and muffins and water. Some of you are uh, working here. Uh, they and they are. Let me tell you that. All those talents are good. Here's one thing. In every church, this happens. 10% do the work of the other 90%. You say, Pastor, that's not right. I agree with you. That's not right. That is not right. Why are we doing all the work and the other ones don't do anything? But listen, we have to be thankful for one another. We have to pray for one another. We have to work in, in unity. But let me tell you, we have to understand, listen, some people are not there yet. Some people physically can't do it. Some people have... So what we do, we do it with our murmuring and complaining and we follow the Lord. And we pray for those who don't. That's what God wants us to do. God wants us to live in such a unity within the local body that we pray for, pray always, be thankful always for everyone. So he said, you might agree or disagree with me, but I tell you what, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to pray for one another. But let me tell you, when this in this ladder of, 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 of sanctification, some people are, are far ahead than others. 
Some are more ahead, more, some are less, are more spiritual than others. And what we do, I have a, a there was a, a pastor that asked me this sobering question when I was on deputation. He said to me, when you open your church, how would you treat the people that only come on Sunday morning and never come any other service? So we were having lunch together and I just stopped. I look at him. That was a very sobering question. I look at him and he, he looked at me and I looked at him and I paused. I put my foot down. I looked at him. I said, you know what? I would pray for them and I will love them. Amen. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Yeah. We pray for them and we love them in Jesus' name. That's how we have unity. That's a heart of gratitude. And let me tell you, my little toe right there, I don't even know exists most of the time. To me, it's very significant. But there are times that he comes up and says, oh, I wish, I hope, I, I'm glad I have my little toe there. But let me tell you, everyone is important in the local body of believers. And we ought to be thankful to the Lord for them. The saints of God, the diversity that they bring into the local church. Be thankful for the saints of God, whatever they are. Listen, even if it just miss spectators, we love them in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't we love the visitors when they come? Don't we go out of our way and to, to show them how thankful we are that they came? Some of them don't ever show up again. They come one time and say, oh, I don't like that place. And they never come again. But let me tell you. Uh, but we're thankful for them. We show gratitude. We show them that we care, that we love them, that we appreciate that they came. Listen, we have to appreciate one another. We have to love one another. Listen, a house of complaining is a house of disorder. Listen, if you have a mom and a dad and a kid and everybody's complaining against, uh, towards each other, listen, there's mayhem and chaos in there. A house works in harmony and wonderfully when God is there, when everything is, is done for the glory of the Lord. I hope God is the center of your home. I really do. But let me tell you, God should be the center of the church. And let me tell you, we are to love each other. A spirit. We are to love the saints of God. Listen, we never know what's going on in people's lives. We never know why they do what they do. So what we do, we love them. Listen, it's easy for any of us to have a, 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 we see, listen, that's what we do. We prejudge what we see. Yeah. We see and we judge. We see and we judge. We see and we judge. Wait, if we stop and we try to understand why people act the way they act and do what they do, we'll say, I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Listen, through the years I met people. They had horrendous situations in their lives. And it was by God's miracle they made it to church. And many people around would never know. And they would smile. And you look at them and you see them smile. You just wanted to cry. Because you knew what was going on in their lives. You knew. Only you and God and them. You knew what's going on. And your heart was broken. And you see them smiling. And you say, praise God, they're smiling. And praise God, they even made it here. And let me tell you. We have to be thankful for the saints of God. Let us see thankful for the Lord. For the, for the love of the truth. I am thankful that I am able to preach. In this place. And to teach the truth. And proclaim the truth in this place. And I am thankful that you allow me to do that. There is a brother of mine. Up in New Hampshire. He was proclaiming the truth. And preaching the truth. I know him very well. Very dynamic preacher. The church didn't want to hear the truth. So one Sunday he got there. They told him he was not welcome in the church anymore. They vote him out. And they put somebody there. That behind the scenes within the church created atmosphere to do that. It was disunity in the church. Now it's not a church that proclaimed the gospel anymore. If you only know what's going on in that church. But see, I'm thankful for the love of truth. I believe that you come to church because you want to hear the word of truth. You want to hear the, the, the truth of God's word. See, many churches will, will not allow a man to preach all the truth. 
because we live in, a, in such a political correctness society, and many de, uh, in these days shy away from proclaiming the truth. I was in the church that that pastor, every time he left that pulpit, when the message was over, he had a bunch of about five or six men that would go in his office and critique everything that he preached. The men would walk around discouraged. And when we would approach him and say, Pastor, what a wonderful message. It made opposite. You could see them gloomy. I had no idea what was, that was going on. Listen, I'm thankful that you allow me to proclaim the truth, to preach the truth. Because the truth always will prevail. Let it be thankfulness for your spiritual growth. There are some Christians who are not at the same point today as other Christians. But let me tell you, I'm thankful for your growth. I see all of you, the way you're growing in the Lord. Some more than others, but we all growing together in the Lord. And this process of growth takes a lifetime. We grow, we fall, we grow. But let me tell you, the, the, you come into church Sunday after Sunday and listening and learning and taking notes and all that. Let me tell you, it is, it, I look at this, it, it, it blesses my heart. It praise, praise, we praise the Lord for each other. Some of you say, even come to me and say, Pastor, I missed this point. It blesses my heart. And sometimes I say, which point? I can't remember the point. I have to go look at it so I can bring it up. That's that point. It blesses my heart. It's wonderful to see the want to grow. And that's, listen, we do that with thankfulness of heart and gratitude of heart. We want to learn from God. We want to live what God says in His Word. In a world that we live in today that is very anti-God. Let me tell you. We live in a world today that is not very friendly with the people of God. And folks, I think it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. I think it's going to get worse. As the coming of the Lord is getting closer and closer, it's going to get worse and worse. And listen, we Christians, we need to open our eyes and be prepared because it's coming. It's coming. I don't think the days of persecution in a church in America is very far. That's right. Be grateful that you can make it to church because I believe it's coming a day that we're not going to be able to. Or we might have to migrate to some other state that we're allowed to. Because just open your eyes and see what's going on. Number five, be thankful for the salvation of God. Go to John chapter 3 verse 36. Be thankful for the salvation of God. It's a wonderful, sobering verse right here, and I'm almost done. Uh, just, uh, just about, give me about two or three minutes. And the Bible says, right, He that believeth on the Son had, li- had everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. So the greatest gift in the world, what? Is Jesus. The greatest gift you and I can receive is what? The gift of salvation. Is the greatest gift. And let me tell you, I believe that every person here that received Jesus as Savior is forever grateful. Amen. I never met a Christian that said, I wish I never got saved. I wish I never, just that day went and, 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 and listened to what that person said to me about the gospel. Let me tell you, the gospel comes to a person's heart and penetrates their heart. And let me tell you, it leaves a person grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful for the person that took time out of his life to come and, and talk to me about Jesus Christ. It changed my life. It changed my family. It changed my mouth. It changed my thinking. It changed everything about me. Mm-hmm. And some people say, oh, and you're wasting your life away. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> One person said to me this way. This is ironic. I think about this. I was working third shift. I never met this man. He was one of my teachers. I just met him for about two minutes. And he said to me, so we need to go to the tool crib to get some tools to do for, for, so I can teach you. So, okay, so I walk with him. This is like late at night, I don't know, 2 or 3 in the morning. And we're walking. And in the job site, we're walking. And he looks at me and he said, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do this or do that. He goes to me, what kind of fun do you have? I look at him, I said, what do you know about me? <laughs> I was stunned. I said, what do you know about me? I said, then he says, yeah, you, what kind of fun do you have? I said, why don't you come and see? I told him, why don't you come and That's not what Jesus said. Come and see. So why don't you come and see? I might have more fun than you do. Amen. And I looked at him. I said, will you have your, your pleasures in the, in the booze? <laughs> you don't have to get the booze to get happy or to have a wonderful time. 
God gave us a wonderful world for us to have a wonderful time. Look at God's creation. I was up in the mountains like, look at creation. Look at the trees. Look at the leaves fall. God is good. Amen. Go sit next to, a, to the shore and the ocean and look at the waves. Look at the water. And you see the goodness of God. You know, when we put our, hair, our eyes in the ways of mankind, we forget God. Yeah. Yeah. You see, God's gift is a wonderful gift. Like I said, I never met a Christian who said, I wish I never received Jesus as my Savior. And let me tell you, you want to be grateful today? You want to learn to have a, a, a heart of, of gratitude? You need Jesus. Amen. I put it both ways. If you are a Christian, you are saved. And let me tell you, you don't, want, you don't walk in the footsteps of Jesus. You're missing out on the blessings of God. Yeah. But let me tell you, if you are here, you're not saved this morning. Let me tell you, you're missing out on the greatest blessings of all. Yeah. Salvation. You know what happens? If you drop dead today, you will never see heaven. Right. And that would be a sad time for you. I conclude with this. We can have a thankful heart towards God even when we knew we do not feel thankful because of our circumstances. We can be, be thankful all the time, all times. Be thankful. Listen, we need to learn to be less critics and have more gratitude. We need to learn to appreciate people and see even they're not perfect, but see their goodness and be thankful to them instead of, of, of be judges over them. So we need to learn those things. To have a heart of gratitude is a decision that you and I make. To have a heart of gratitude for people. To have a heart of gratitude for God. We need to learn those things because none of us are thankful. All of us are self center many times and selfish by our own nature but God wants us to be thankful we can grieve and still be thankful we can hurt and still be thankful we can be angry and sin and still be thankful towards God let me tell you I look at my granddaughter yesterday with all the problems that she had and I look at my daughter and her dad, and I just, I just observe those things. And I could see the gratefulness in their hearts. They didn't look at the, 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 the situation in her little baby. They didn't look at the difficulties that she might have down the future. They love her. They're thankful for her. And let me tell you, for a... First time uh, parents, it must have been hard. I cannot express oh, the, when, when it went on to their to the hearts and minds. I know one time that my son-in-law found he was crying inside of his car. The pain and what was going on and, and the uncertainty of life. But let me tell you, I look at them celebrating their first birthday. I saw the thankfulness of their hearts. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way God wants us to be, folks. God wants us to be thankful for one another. God wants, to understand, wants us to be thankful for His holiness and for the mercies of God. And He wants us to express that. Listen to me, and I close with this every day. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You, Lord, for Your mercy. And thank You, Lord, for Your goodness. Thank You, Lord, for the life that You give us. And help us, Lord, to be thankful always. Lord, even the most difficult times of life, Help us to be thankful. In Jesus' name.